This is probably my favorite sweater I've ever knitted for myself. Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to Knitting with Nani Gnome. I'm filming this on January 1st, so I just want to wish everyone a happy new year and I hope that your 2023 is off to a great start. I have three finished objects to share with you today, then I'm going to talk about my work in progress, what I'm planning to make next, and then a little bit about life. So first up on the docket is my St. Patrick's sweater from A Fine Fleece. I did manage to finish the sweater before the end of the year, so I completed my Make 9 for 2022, which was very exciting. The yarn that I used was Valley Yarns Superwash DK in an undyed colorway. I made the smallest size of the pattern, but I was knitting at a smaller gauge because the pattern originally calls for Aran weight yarn. So my sweater ended up with about a 36 inch finished chest, which is just the perfect fit for me. And I did end up shortening the sleeves by three inches, but otherwise didn't make any modifications. I enjoyed every minute of knitting this sweater. It was just so fun, and the pattern was actually surprisingly not that difficult. It knit up very quickly. I think I finished the sweater in just under a month. I used my bamboo interchangeable needles in sizes five and six. One thing that I wanted to point out that I thought might be helpful to others is that I knew that I was gonna need to shorten the sleeves because I'm very short and I have short arms. And I also was knitting at a tighter gauge, so my row gauge was different from what the pattern called for. So I used a sleeve shaping calculator from worldknits.com and I will put that link down in the description box. And it's a very simple calculator. You just put in your row gauge, you put in how many stitches you need to increase or decrease. And it does all the calculations for you so that you know when you're supposed to increase in my case and um, I don't have to do the math myself. So I thought that was incredibly handy. When I was a new knitter way back in 2003, the first couple sweaters that I knit had gorilla arms because I didn't even know at the time that you could change the length of the sleeves and I didn't know how to do that. So that kind of resource would have been really helpful to me when I was a newer knitter. Now, as much as I really enjoyed the process of making the sweater, I think I love the finished product even more. I have always wanted to have a cream colored Aran sweater and for some reason I just hadn't ever made myself one. I know that some people might think that it's a little bit boring, but to me it is like the perfect classic piece for my wardrobe. It goes with so many different things. I made a little short video of three different ways that I could style it. And honestly, I could have just kept going and going with lots of different outfits, but I stopped at three. I know that I will get so much wear out of this sweater in the winter months. I took it with me on my trip to Colorado when I visited my dad and I wore it a couple of times there, as well as wearing it at home. The one thing that I am not too happy about with the sweater is my yarn choice. It is a very, very soft yarn, and so in that respect, it's nice, but I can already tell that it's going to pill really easily, so I'm not in love with that. I do think that I will need to be mindful about removing pills fairly frequently so that it doesn't look old and ratty too quickly. Other than that, I just could not be more thrilled with how this turned out. I still say that my proudest make of all time is still the sweater that I showed you in my very first video, which if you haven't seen that, I will link it down in the description box. But that sweater was for my husband, and so I don't get to wear it personally. So for sweaters that I've made for me, I think that this one is my favorite. So for my next finished object, I made myself a pair of Christmas socks. Now when I finished the sweater, I still had about a week and a half left before I was going to be traveling, so I thought it was just enough time to squeeze out a pair of holiday socks. Now I'm not normally super into Christmas socks, but I do have a lot of Christmas yarn in my stash. I think at one point I wanted to do one of those personal sock clubs where you stick 12 skeins of yarn in a brown paper bag and then you just pull one out every month and knit with it. I think one year I bought enough to do 12 pairs of Christmas socks and then I didn't actually finish the project. So I still have a ton of Christmas sock yarn in my stash, so I just went ahead and grabbed one of those and knit a pair of Christmas socks. This is Woolen Vine Yarns Blitzed Base in the Holly Jolly colorway. I haven't been buying yarn for several years, so I have no idea if she still carries this base or this colorway or if Woolen Vine Yarns is even still open. But at any rate, um, I went ahead and used up this yarn that was in my stash. I did plain vanilla socks toe up, I wanted to kind of change it up a little bit. So I did a wedge toe, I did 68 stitches for the sock. I did a German short row heel with a mini gusset and heel flap. And that is a tutorial that I purchased from Mina Phillip. If it's available, I'll try to link it in the description box. And then I did one by one half twisted rib. And for some reason, I decided that I wanted to do a tubular bind off. 
Normally, I just don't care enough to put in the time and effort to do a sewn tubular bind off on socks because I figure it just doesn't even really matter. You're not going to see it. But like I said, for whatever reason, I just felt like doing it. So I did a tubular bind off. I do think it looks lovely. I probably won't do this anymore, but it was fun to do the one time. And I really like the way that these socks fit. Normally short row heel socks do not fit me very well, but by doing that mini heel flap and gusset, it adds just enough room that it comes on and off my foot pretty easily. And I do love the sparkle of the yarn and how this yarn knit up. I think it looks really beautiful. There's no pooling. So I've not worn these yet because I hadn't washed them before I left, but I'll just put them in my sock drawer and I'll go ahead and wear them. I don't care if I wear Christmas socks even when it's not Christmas time. Now for my third finished object, this is the one that I decided to take with me on my trip. I decided to do a sock head hat by Kelly McClure. Now I have made this free pattern before, but I've never actually kept it for myself. I made the size medium and I used my Trailing Clouds Mind the Gap yarn. So I've already done one project out of my 2023 Make 9, so pat on the back for me. I used size two needles for the brim ribbing and then I used size three for the body of the hat. And when I make a sock head hat, I do actually shorten the body of the hat a little bit because I find that it's just a little bit more slouchy than I really want. What I like with these hats is I like to be able to wear it with the brim unfolded and it looks slouchy, or I can fold up the brim and it looks more like a regular beanie. That's the style that I prefer. I really love how this hat knit up. I think the colors are really beautiful and I like the little narrow stripes. This will definitely be a little bit of dopamine dressing for those dreary winter days when I just want something cheerful to put on. It's a really easy hat to knit. I didn't really have to think about it. And I did mistime things a little bit. I ended up finishing this hat a little bit early. I still had a couple days left on my trips without anything to knit, but I got through it. It was fine. And I do like that this was a good travel hat because it's super simple and I could just work on it while I was watching TV and visiting with family. I do think it's a good travel project. Now let's chat about some works in progress. So I had been doing really well with spinning on my shifty sweater spin, but of course I went out of town for a little bit and so I didn't work on it then. And then when I came back, I hadn't really felt like spinning so I didn't do a lot of it. I just picked up spinning again last night. But in the meantime, I do have these two skeins. I just washed these yesterday, so I need to reskein them and count the yardage so they're not quite finished yet. But this skein I already showed you in my previous video, and then this one is a new one. These are both from the Hello Yarn patchwork kits, and I had separated them by color. I did a two-ply yarn. I'm spinning long draw from the fold so that they'll be nice and light and fluffy. I spun the singles on my Modicraft rows, and then this one I plied on the rows, and this one I plied on my Hanson mini spinner. And I'm hoping that I'll have enough yardage to use for the contrast. There's three different contrasts in this shifty sweater. So I have these two done, and I just started working on the third contrast, which is going to be primarily purples. I'm really enjoying working on this project. It's just so much fun to spin with dyed fiber. And I love how even though there's kind of a base color of these, like this one's primarily pink and this one's primarily orange, but there's lots of different other colors mixed in that just makes it so interesting to spin. The other project that I'm working on is I started working on my husband's camping blanket. So I had described in a previous video that my husband goes camping a lot in the winter and he wanted a 100% wool, really warm, thick blanket to take with him. So I immediately thought of crochet and I had ordered a bundle of Knit Picks Swish Bulky Yarn. I think I have 40 skeins in all of the colorways that come in that line. And ultimately I decided to do a ripple blanket. I'm using the free pattern Neat Ripple from Attic 24. I did do a swatch so that I would know how wide the repeats are. I'm using a J Clover Soft Touch hook, which is my favorite hooks to use for crochet because they don't hurt my hands. And I've already made so much progress on this blanket. Now I've decided to make the blanket roughly 90 inches square. So it was a lot of chaining, but once I got started, it's actually really, really simple and it's working up so fast. I'm just using an entire skein of yarn and when I run out, I do a Russian join and then just keep going. I decided not to switch colors only at the end of a row because it wastes a lot of yarn because the rows are so long. So my blanket, it looks more like as if it were a self-striping yarn where the colors change in the middle of a row. But I think overall the effect is still stripey. 
you aren't really going to notice those color changes in the overall grand scheme of things. So that's what I'm going for so that I can utilize all the yarn that I have. Now, originally in my make nine plans, I said I wanted to work up a third of this blanket in 2023, but I forgot how quickly chunky yarn works up and how fast crochet is. So as you can see, I've already used eight skeins of yarn, and this is even a little bit more from the footage that I took yesterday. I had added on a few more colors since then. So now I'm just gonna revise my plan that I wanna finish the whole blanket in 2023, and I'm sure that my husband will be thrilled that it'll be finished faster. This yarn is so soft, and because it's chunky, it has a really nice weight to it, and I like the gauge that I'm getting with the J hook. I think that this is going to be a very satisfying blanket to sleep under. It'll have a nice weight to it, but be really, really warm. So what is up next? Well, I'm going to keep working on my crochet blanket for as long as I can before I get tired of it. I do know myself pretty well, and at some point I'm going to be sick of it before it's over with. So I'm going to put it away when that happens. And then I think the next project I'm probably going to work on after that is one of my kits from Hudson and West Co. I want to make the Archer scarf out of the beautiful Mallard colorway that I showed you in my previous video. This is also on my Make 9, and I just really want a new winter scarf to wear. I think that it'll be beautiful and cozy and textured. So that is the project that I think I will work on next, but I'm not going to start it until I'm actually tired of working on my blanket. So now I just want to chat with you a little bit about what's going on in my life. So right around Christmas time, I went to Colorado to visit my dad, and if you guys remember, there was that giant storm that was coming through. So I actually got really lucky that my flight arrived just before the storm hit. So the first day that I was in Colorado, it was like negative 13 degrees. It was so cold. I did not venture outside at all that day. But after that, it actually quickly warmed up and it was in the 50s. So it was actually warmer than what I am used to here in Western New York. It was actually kind of funny because I was in Colorado for around a week and on the news, they just kept talking about Buffalo and what a disaster that it was there. And so many people unfortunately passed away from the storm. So I was a little bit worried about what conditions were gonna be like when I came back home. I live in Western New York, but I don't live in Buffalo, thank goodness. When I actually flew back on Tuesday, I got home really late at night. And when my husband pulled in the driveway, there was literally like half an inch of snow on the ground. It's just so incredibly bizarre how we can live right next to Buffalo. We're about an hour's drive away and yet have such different weather conditions, but that's just the way that it goes sometimes. And of course, I'm not complaining. It's not like I wanted all that snow. So while I was gone, my husband very, very kindly gave me a nice Christmas present, which is he painted this wall back here behind me. I had put in a request just to ask him to paint an accent wall in my studio, just to give me a little bit more variety with my backgrounds. And he was very lovely and kind, and he did that for me while I was gone. So I hope that you guys like it. I really do. I think that it looks lovely. It's actually a very dark shade of green and it looks different in different lights. And I'm really thrilled with the way that it turned out. I had a really nice time on my trip and I enjoyed being with my family and everyone seems to be in relatively good health. Although while I was there, some of my nieces and nephews were ill and so we ended up having to isolate from them for quite a bit because um, of course they didn't want to get my elderly parents sick. But other than that, it was a wonderful visit but I am really glad to be back home now. I really missed my dogs. And now I just wanna share with you a couple of things that I've been watching and listening to. So while I was at my dad's, I found a new TV show that I had never watched before. Um, probably a lot of you know about it. It's called Ghosts. It airs on CBS. I never watch regular TV unless it's sports. And so I just had never watched the show before. And one of the nights I was there, they had like a mini marathon of it or something, and I thought it was really funny. So when I got back home, I started watching it because we do have Paramount Plus. So I'm really enjoying watching that. It's just a cute little half hour comedy. And of course, while I was traveling, I loaded up my iPad with podcasts because I knew I was going to be traveling all day and I needed something to listen to. So I started this new to me podcast, which is called Can I Tell You a Secret? It's put out by The Guardian. It's a true crime podcast. It's about this stalker in Britain and how he cyber stalks all these women and terrorize them. But it's also a little bit complex because the stalker has Asperger's. So it's a little bit of a moral conundrum of of course it's terrible that he is doing all these bad things to these women but he also has some mental health issues and so what do you do when that happens and so it was a really interesting thing to listen to i actually still have a couple of episodes left i didn't quite finish it on my travel day but i did really enjoy listening to that so i thought i would share it with you 
Now, if you would like more information about the sweater that truly is the proudest make that I have ever created, I'm gonna throw this video for you to watch next, just in case you wanna check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate that you take time out of your day to watch my videos, and I will see you again next time.